Okay, I want to share with you today, um, the title of what I'd like to share is Seeking the Body of the Crucified. Seeking the Body of the Crucified. I'd like for you to turn with me to John chapter 20 and verse 13. And this is uh, Mary Magdalene who is sharing here. They have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. So when she's speaking this, she's in deep despair. Um, why? Well, she's in despair over the body of Christ. And um, her, her question is, where has it gone? Where has the body of Christ gone? Um, now reading from Colossians chapter 1, just verse 17 and 18, it addresses the body. And in speaking of Jesus, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. <clears throat> now this could this could apply to the the body of Christ today. This reality that we're going to be looking at here is, and that that is, <clears throat> are you concerned over the body of Christ? Is there some um, struggle or problem um, with that? And if there is, then, you know, the question might arise like it did with Mary Magdalene, because this was her concern. Um, when was the last time you saw life in the body? Um, or is the life gone from the body? And certainly we're not, you know, as I said, Mary Magdalene was talking about the physical body of Christ, but we're talking about the actual body of Christ on this earth. What we want is we want life. Um, and so, you know, look, uh, look in with me, John 19, and here we have Mary with him before he dies on the cross. Now there's, this is verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. And as she stood there, she, she saw Jesus die. She saw the life leave the body. Um, and when he died at that moment, she could say, well, I'm, I'm here with the body. I'm here, but I do not sense the life anymore. Um, there's probably a logical fear that that life would be gone forever. Um, and as I said, this was, this was her concern in relationship to the body. Um, but we know, not just our own experience, but hers, we know that he will be seen again. But we also know that his body was different. It was different. It was a different body. And so, um, so the, well, if I could speak to Mary, I would say, and I'm not talking to you, Mary's out there right now, but to Mary Magdalene, I would say, Mary, you knew the body of the Nazarene, but he's different now. He's different now. His body's different. And um, it's just a fact that before all this happened, before the cross, before the trial, before all the things that happened, she only knew the Nazarene's body. She only knew him in that form. So in John 16, um, we want to kind of start thinking about Jesus now in a body that's of a different form. I'm sure she she remembered when Jesus said some things to her 
um, that Jesus said that his body that we, you know, that, she, that you're familiar with must go away. And so I want to read um, John 16, verse 7, verse 14, and verse 16 together. This is Jesus speaking. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. So, again, when Jesus is saying that, he's saying that in the body that is familiar to them. But Mary Magdalene, her concern is that, um, you know, someone has taken him from me. Someone has taken Jesus from me in that form, in the form that I was familiar with. And so she's seeking, she's seeking. That body's gone, but she's seeking the body of the crucified. And that's her, that's her um, focus. Now, you know, not everyone during those days when Jesus died on the cross, not everyone was seeking the body of the crucified. They were probably, many of them, still seeking the body of the Nazarene, the group that gathered to the Nazarene. But she was seeking the body of the crucified. And maybe she came to that. Maybe those words that Jesus spoke came to her and she began to think about that. And she began to think, you know, I need to seek him in a new form. He said he was going to go away. And I need to seek him in his new form. I need to seek him in his new body. In his new body. And we know from what she was pursuing in her heart, she was saying, I must seek the body of the crucified. That's what I'm seeking. So, in uh, John chapter 20, uh, she doesn't know where to find him. She doesn't know, particularly she doesn't know where to find this him, this crucified body. And in, in John 20 verse 13, and you hear the agony, you hear the, you hear the pathos as she's crying out. They have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. So she wants to see, she wants to discover the body of the crucified. She's, she wants to find the abode of that body, to find its place. And that's what she's seeking. And she wants to... She wants to do it to minister to it, because they always did. She wants to minister to that body. So her cry was, I want to find the crucified body. I want to be joined to that. I want to touch the print of the nails. I want to be with the crucified body. So let's look in, still in John 20 and in verse 1. Um, the, the question may arise in our minds, to whom was he first revealed in this new form, in this crucified body form? Well, sure enough, it's, it's a woman. And sure enough, it's Mary Magdalene. And... So the question, having 11 disciples and 70 that followed him and great multitudes, 
why was he revealed to a woman or why was he revealed uh, specifically to Mary Magdalene so beginning in verse 1 of John the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early <laughs> she's early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter. So she's coming to the disciples. And to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he did not, and he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloth lying, yet went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not, for as yet they knew not that the sepulcher, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. Okay, So then the disciples went away again to their own home, but Mary, what's going on here? I mean, who's seeking, who's really seeking the body of the crucified? Then the disciples went away again, went away again unto their, unto their home, own, own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why are you upset? Well, I was there. The life left the body of the Nazarene. I was there. I saw it. Why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus Jesus saith unto her woman why weepest thou whom seekest thou she supposing him to be the gardener saith unto him sir if thou have borne him hence tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away she's seeking the body of the crucified. And there will be a wonderful discovery as she discovers the body of the crucified. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the crucified Lord, the body of the crucified Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Why, why Mary? 
Why would she see his body in a new form? Why would she understand I now follow the, the Christ, the, the one of the crucified body? Why did that take place? It took place because she was seeking him. She knew I have to find the body of the crucified. She was going after him. The disciples weren't. The disciples were hiding in their own house, in their own place, and, and, uh, and hiding as representative of the old body. Just 12 people gathered around Jesus, the old body, but not the crucified body, but the body, that body that they were familiar with, the body of the 12, if you will. They no longer had Jesus. Not in that way. He was now changed bodies and they were to join to that body. They were to seek that body and become one. They were to touch the, the nail prints of his hand. They were to become familiarized with that body. So, I wrote down a couple of questions. Let me ask you some questions. What are you seeking? That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said to Mary Magdalene. What are you seeking? I'm seeking the body of the crucified. Are you seeking what is familiar? Because to all of them, that's what they were that's what they were familiar with they were familiar with the nazarene they were familiar with the one who instead of being wounded healed everybody instead of being uh broken uh put everybody back together but now jesus and they did they missed it went right over their heads jesus sits on passover just before his death and he says, this is my body. And he breaks it. And he gives it to him and says, eat this. Put my body, become one with my body, my broken body, my, the body of the crucified. Become the body of the crucified. It's as if at Passover he's saying, everything's different after this. This is no longer... Everything that we've done before is not what it's all about anymore. And you now are more like this broken bread than you are like you 12 guys sitting around a table. Eat it. Seek it. Desire to be joined to the body of the crucified. And my last question is, are you willing to seek a body with a different emphasis? A body with a different emphasis. The body of Christ, the, the body of the crucified, with that emphasis. Instead of, well, when will the kingdom come? And, what you know, when will all these great things happen? Jesus said, and they didn't catch that either. Take up your cross. Follow me, I'm the crucified. Well... There's good news to this story then, okay? So while, while Mary Magdalene was seeking the body of the crucified, she found his life. Well, that's the purpose of the body of the crucified. To introduce us to the life of the crucified. That's the purpose for gathering. That's the purpose for joining. That's the purpose for... Uh, being focused is to find the life of the crucified to fill us as his body. This is my blood poured out for you. Drink it. The life of the crucified. Eat it. The life of the crucified. Become his body. What body? The body of Jesus. No, the body of the crucified. The <laughs> body of the crucified. So... Um, according to this story and in the spirit of it, are you, are you a Mary? 
And if you are, my thought comes, my, my desire comes to say to all you Marys, keep seeking him, Mary. Keep seeking the body of the crucified until the life fills every one of us. Until we're all filled, not with human bread or human wine, but with the life and nature of the crucified so that we live as the body of the crucified. Amen. Let's pray. Hmm. Lord, hallelujah. Glory to you in the highest, in the highest of our heart, in the highest focus that we can have. Glory to you, and may we bring glory to you in being broken, in being poured out. May we not just house Jesus of Nazareth, but may we be Live, breathe as the body of the crucified. Jesus, we accept your form through the cross. We accept your desire that we eat of this, that we breathe this, that we love you in your, in your scars, in your wounds. But we love you not because of suffering or scars or wounds, but because the selfless spirit in which you did it for people who didn't deserve it. We love you, Jesus. We want to be, we want to be like Mary. <laughs> when everyone else is hiding or everyone else is disgruntled or everyone else has, is afraid of what's going to happen, she went and sought your body, Jesus, your crucified body. Hallelujah. And she found the life of the crucified. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the seeds of life that can go forth and scatter into even our hard ground. And you can, you can breathe on it like you did the disciple. Breathe on us the reality of what's in you. And let life spring forth. Father, I just pray this for each and every one that's listening now and those will listen later. May our focus be sharp. May we not give up, even if weeping because we haven't yet laid hold of the fullness of what we're even talking about. May even through weeping eyes and, and barely seeing you as the crucified, assuming you're, you're a gardener, may you speak to us and open our weeping eyes, our tear-filled eyes, because we love you and because we want you and because we have to have you and because we can't stand that you would be gone from us. Make us the body of your crucifixion, of your nail-scarred hands, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.